First off, before we start this review, congratulations to everyone I know who worked on this film. This film was filmed out here in Vancouver. In person, it looks like a lot of that effort paid off. The visual effects team, though... Uh, mm. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for The Atom Project. This is the latest Ryan Reynolds Netflix film. It is also, once again, directed by uh, Sean Levy, who now looks to be in the director's seat for Deadpool 3. This film is a fun... Kind of if Spielberg made a film that he didn't really feel like making, but still wanted to anyways. It emulates a lot of that 80s, early 90s kind of Steven Spielberg-esque kind of fantasy, sci-fi, family connectivity. However, in terms of its effectiveness and its actual full-on execution, it definitely falters in some aspects, but it also is quite high in others. This film follows Ryan Reynolds, who is a time traveler who travels back in time to meet up with his younger self in an attempt to, one, save his wife, as well as prevent Katherine Keener from manipulating time. You've already got one kind of very obvious issue. You have a villain that is horrible. Katherine Keener is an actually good actress, so the fact that she is doing her best stiff bored impression doesn't help. You don't have any kind of connectivity with her and then her henchman goon. These two are some of the worst parts of this movie. There's another aspect, but we'll get to that. Ryan Reynolds and the kid, though, have amazing chemistry. You saw it in a lot of the previews that they showed before this film came out. In this film, you really do get the idea that this kid is a younger Ryan Reynolds. Because let's be honest, Ryan Reynolds' character is just himself in this movie, just in the PG-13 realm. So he is enjoyable. He's definitely a lot better than he was in Red Notice. And I also do like the connections with this film in terms of its family aspect. You get a lot of that with the kid and himself. This is something that kind of is vaguely talked about in time travel movies because there's always those paradox things. And this film kind of makes up its own sort of time travel business which is funny because Mark Ruffalo is in it and this is another movie that it heavily uses time travel <laughs> as a means of saving the world. The back and forth banter but also the connection that these two share especially with their views of their father. We get Ryan Reynolds who is quite jaded at the world, jaded at life, but he does have this one kind of very significant factor in his life being his wife played by Zoe who is missing but also his jaded memories of his father whereas the kid still has good memories of their father and still has these moments that he remembers quite fondly that Ryan has forgotten and the younger him does incorporate this and he kind of does bring these aspects back and it helps humanize Ryan Reynolds's character. And then you have Zoe Zalanda who plays his wife who is fantastic actually in this movie. She's actually a really great addition to the story. She's one of the first great aspects of the film. The second is Mark Ruffalo. I actually really like Mark's character in this film even if he is just Bruce Banner. His connection with the, his two sons time-wise is really well done. There is a moment between the three of them that is just heartwarming. You cannot watch this without getting a little teary. That's where I think a lot of the Spielberg kind of comments were coming from because you really have this rooted family aspect and that is the strongest part. Ryan, the kid, and his father. That connection and even their mom who's played by Jennifer Garner in this film, there's a moment with her as well that is also very akin to that family aspect. But then the other negative bit I was going to tell you about is the visual effects in this movie are fucking atrocious. For considering the amount of money that went into this movie, it's quite laughable. You have Free Guy that came out the same year almost as this movie did, and it's leaps and bounds better than this film was. Between some really awful de-aging, some very spotty special effects with a spaceship, to a, an entire set that is nothing but CG and it looks terrible. But there is the lightsaber staff thing. The lightsaber staff thing is actually quite fun because they use it not just as a lightsaber, but they actually get creative with how they use it in the fight scenes. They kind of use it like a double jump almost in terms of being able to get off the ground, being able to leap to higher areas. I like when visual effect teams and film teams incorporate some creativity in terms of using weapons and inventory, and it just adds a little bit more of a level to it. And considering the film really doesn't take any kind of whoa avenues with its story, it's a pretty patented, pretty basic story. The core element that you're going to be focusing on is the family aspect, and they focus on that 
quite a bit and they should because it is the best part of the movie. It doesn't have an element to it that would make you want to come back and re-watch it. It doesn't really have anything that will be like, yeah, let's put the Atom Project on. That just goes in one ear, not the other. But at least it is a pleasant experience. So in the end, I am going to give the Atom Project a very generous 4 out of 7. Realistically, it's a 3 out of 7, but considering I gave Red Notice a 2, would really that movie should have got a 1. Did he get a one? I don't know, the movie was awful. This film falls in between three and a four, really. But if you're looking for something deeper than, I don't know, foot high water, you're not gonna get it here. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. But until then, guys, that's all from me, so I'll see you guys next time.